Hey guys, it's your boy Rumsey, back with some good good to step up your in-game efficiency and save your precious time and resources. If you're like me, you probably found yourself wondering if there was a better way to move all those objects that you're unable to take through a portal. If you don't like using the world hopping glitch, or other questionable bugs, this is probably the best way to transport objects across the world in a consistent manner without having to make two trips or double handle. I'm sure I'm not the only one who was super excited to set out on the open seas, only to find out that they were limited by the storage capacity on their ship. This problem becomes less serious once you're able to unlock the third tier boat. But up until that point, you're very limited on what you can take with you or travel back to your base with. With a little bit of pre-planning and the utilization of the physics system amongst other things, we can actually add a pretty considerable amount of storage to our ships without having to worry about reenacting the Boston Tea Party with all our precious goods. Unfortunately, the water isn't the only thing we're contending with here. We're also contending with the physics system in Valheim. I'm sure many of you noticed that while using a card on dry land, the heavier you become, the slower you move. This is because, as your character grows in weight, the physics system pushes down on your character just like gravity in real life. That same force is applied to your boat as you load it up with heavy cargo. This is especially useful to note because as you're loading your boat, you have to be mindful of the position of the carts. With one or two carts on your boat, it's not a very big deal, but as you start getting crazy with it and adding six or seven carts, you have to be super mindful of the position of each cart, especially if you're loading them with objects such as oars or bars. Here we are at one of my forward operating bases. This is where I have stored a bunch of my oars and bars. And as you can see, I'm unable to take them through my portal. After making multiple trips, I became very impatient and decided to figure out if there was another way to transport these objects without using the portal or other questionable bugs. As this base sits on the corner of many useful biomes, I've been accumulating an ever-growing amount of bars at this base that I've just been too lazy to ferry back to my main. The 18 slots on the large boat is probably good for most players, but if you're playing in a small group or you're stuck to using one of the lower tiered boats, this method becomes especially useful. If your boat happens to sit at the right elevation, it's not too hard to just run and jump and pull the cart onto the boat but this only applies if you're putting one or two carts on a large ship. You have to be a little bit more specific if you're loading carts onto the smaller boat or if you want to stack multiple carts on the large boat. The placement of the cart is probably the most important thing to note here. It's really good if you can get the cart wedged against the mast. This will stop the cart from rolling back and forth too much while you're out in the ocean. When you're able to get your car wedged in a good position, you can simply load it up with everything that you'd like to transport. Not only will you have the storage capacity that comes on the ship, but then you'll also have the other storage slots provided by the car. If you still need more storage on your boat, it's really helpful to build a small scaffold in the area where you'd like to place your car. Keep in mind that we have to be mindful of the distribution of the weight after we load things into our cart. Using some of the support beams, you can weigh down your boat you can actually push it down into the water which will make for easier loading of the carts.
Placing the cartwheels on the sides of these supports will allow you to destroy the supports and have the cart fall in a predictable spot every time. As you can see, if you do things wrong, sometimes the boat will start to shake. This becomes very dangerous if you have more supports poking into your boat. Making a loading station on top of your scaffolding is also very helpful. If you build your scaffolding close enough to the boat, you can easily access the storage spots on these carts. This makes for easy loading and unloading. Dependent on your needs, you can put as many carts as you'd like on your boat. The only thing you have to be mindful of is the position and the weight distribution of the carts after you load them. If your boat looks to be sitting either top or back heavy, make sure to even out the load on the boat. Meaning if you have a cart filled with ore in the back of your boat, try to place one with a similar weight distribution in the front of your boat. Just to give you guys an idea, this is the distance I have to travel to get my stuff from my main base to my farming base. One or two trips is no big deal, but when you have accumulated so many resources, it can become very tiresome. As much as I enjoy the sailing system in Valheim, I've never been a big fan of double handling, so this method is a no-brainer for someone like me. I'm getting a little crazy with the amount of carts now, but this is just sort of a proof of concept. Just to show you guys what's actually doable and what you can and can't do before you have to try it yourself. After you're happy with the amount of storage you've created in your boat, delete all the pillars or anything that might create a snag while you're trying to pull your boat out of your dock. In this example, I loaded my boat to the brim with an unrealistic amount of oars and bars. As you can see, I'm not moving super fast. Not until I get a tailwind and I'm out on the open seas do I start to pick up some speed. Though wind intensity has a large role to play here, the actual weight that you're carrying on your boat seems to be less important than the actual weight distribution of the carts themselves. Like everything in life, moderation is key. With just a few moments of going AFK, I was unable to steer my boat back into the water. The minute I hit a rock, my boat capsized immediately. There seems to be some mysterious forces at play here. Whether it's Odin, or it's just the laws of physics, I'm unsure. But these boars seem very suspect. After chaperoning my newly created yard sale, I decided to go back to the drawing board, this time taking a more realistic approach. If you happen to have a similar incident occur, it's worth noting that you can actually swim with your cart while going through open water. Capsizing could have been easily avoided if I was simply paying attention, but it's good to note what can happen in a worst case scenario. After collecting my goods and my thoughts, I took a more realistic approach and just decided to add one full cart to the large ship. Once again, the positioning of the cart is crucial here. Try to get it lodged within the mast on the boat. There's absolutely some diminishing returns with this method. In comparison to the last example, we're able to really get moving when we keep the boat balanced with a modest amount of carts. You can effectively double or triple a large longship's capacity and not totally ruin your speed if you keep the carts limited and properly balanced. It's also important to note that when you load up a cart, the cart begins to populate small four slot boxes inside the cart. These have some interesting properties. 
as these boxes become movable and or interactable once they are populated and the cart is destroyed. Another interesting thing about these boxes is that they don't act as regular items, rather more like an interactable chest that rolls around similar to other objects and will continue to exist in the game world until you remove all of the items from each box. Not only are these boxes movable, but they don't seem to calculate the weight of the objects within them, meaning you could potentially load a ship full of the carts, load them to the max, and destroy the carts, leaving behind the slot cap boxes on the ground and leaving the weight of the boat unhindered. This has some serious potential. Just be careful if you happen to find yourself in a storm while out on open water. Moving down to the medium boat or the carve, this idea really shines. Seeing as the carve is buildable as soon as you get to bronze, it comes out of the box with a measly 4 inventory slots. It's kind of a game changer knowing you're able to add an additional 18 to 36 slots that you can weigh down with anything thanks to its slim design and great center of balance. History tells us that the Vikings used the Carvet as a cargo ship as well as a battleship, so this is kind of fitting that we're able to do this. The Carvet is like a missile even when slot cap with bars weighed down to almost 6400 units. This is probably the best option out of the three, especially considering it's buildable so early in the game. While we're on the subject, I figured I would test the capabilities of storage on the raft. As this is a very inexpensive and accessible method of travel at any stage of the game, albeit a very slow one. As a solo player, this method is doable but is not as dependable as if you were in a group of two. I say not as dependable because this method relies solely on the fact of wedging the cart between the mast and your character where he sits in the back of the boat. If you have a second player, one of the players can steer the raft and the other player can attach themselves to the cart in front of the mast. It's not very fast, but if you find yourself landlocked and you have no other option of getting your stuff off the island in the early game, it's an option. Throughout my testing, I also tried a bunch of other crazy methods of attaching the cart to the boat with varying success, but I figure it's worthwhile to throw these clips in here anyways to possibly spark some ideas from all of you. I'm certain that all these methods could be improved upon, but even as they are, I believe they are of significance and can definitely add some quality of life and value to your in-game experience. Please don't be afraid to share your thoughts and ideas on these concepts, as I'm constantly looking to improve upon these ideas and see just how far we're able to take it. Flipping the cart over is actually a pretty decent concept as well, as the cart looks to create friction when it's flipped and rolls around much less. However, I recommend loading the cart with some light objects to populate the boxes before you flip it over. This will make for easier access of the storage portions. Thanks a ton to everyone who took the time to dislike and flame my video, and for everyone who watched this far. Without getting too melodramatic, I really appreciate everyone who takes the time to show my videos some love and share their feedback on my ideas. I've been slowly upgrading my equipment and getting a better understanding on how to record and edit properly, but I've got a long journey ahead of me, and I appreciate all of you being so cool as I get there. I've got a ton of projects I've been juggling, so if you like these kind of videos, show this video some love and keep an eye out for the next one. Like all the videos I share, I'm not showcasing something you have to do, rather just showcasing things that you can do. And like everything, these methods could absolutely be improved upon, and I would love to hear what sort of ideas you guys have to make this more efficient. Being a sandbox game, there's so much potential for experimentation and play. Some of the best ideas are born out of the creative process within these communities. So please, experiment with this idea yourself, 
and tell me if you have any sweet ideas to improve upon the concept. I really look forward to hearing from you guys, and I promise to get back to every one of you as fast as I can. I know that together we can build a very janky yet time efficient world, and I hope that you guys are as stoked as I am to see what possibilities and new ideas are just around the corner. Until next time, everyone stay safe and thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.